Welcome to Crypto Mastery, guys. We're on week 47 of 2022. This is where we make crypto easy to understand, simple to invest in. We're going to look at the news, the overall market, some hot movers in our basket, the indicators, and most importantly, questions and answers. I'm Susie, also known as Crypto Girl, and we've got Joe on the line, the creator of the Crypto Mastery Indicators. So just out in the news today is Will Justin Sun buy FTX? Disclaimer, the opinion expressed here is not investment advice. It's just to provide for informational purposes only. So Justin Sun is evaluating potential purchase of FTX assets. And this is by Pratik on CoinGate.com. He is a prominent supporter of cryptocurrencies, recently stated that his partners were investing in investigating the possibilities of purchasing assets from Sam Bankman Freed. And that's from his FTX Enterprise. We are willing to negotiate any kind of a deal, Mr. Sun told reporters in Singapore on Tuesday, that he believes all of their potential choices should be considered. Right now, we are examining assets one by one, but as far as I understand, the process is going to take a long time given that they are already going through this kind of bankruptcy procedure. Mr. Sun is responsible for the creation of the cryptocurrency network Tron and currently consults for Huobi Global Digital Asset Exchange. Mr. Sun stated that right now, our team is in the Bahamas in order to hold discussions with FTX. Later, he clarified that this statement referred to representatives of both Tron and Huobi, as well as the Bahamas. Next in the news today is Ripple now almost twice as big as Coinbase by capitalization. This is by Gamza on Cointelegraph.com. So Ripple is now worth nearly twice as much as Coinbase, one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges. The paradox came about as a result of the exchange's record low share price, which dipped below $40.80 after another round of capitalization of crypto-related stocks. While Coinbase has a market capitalization of $9.6 billion now, Ripple is valued at $18.6 5 billion. Coinbase, Coinbase, which peaked at 76.9 billion, fell below 10 billion for the first time since its IPO. In addition to the overall negative sentiment of the crypto market, the coin price, that's the stock, guys, just so you understand, COIN is not a crypto asset, it is a stock price is under additional pressure from rumors of the exchange's possible bankruptcy that emerged from the Grayscale story. The exchange itself has denied all such speculation. So I thought this was pretty exciting to share with you guys in conclusion to that article, what we just saw, because I personally use Coinbase. So on coinmarketcap.com, they've created this new reserve exchange data. They say safety comes first, and that means being transparent within the crypto space. Look out for our icon to view the financial reserves of various exchanges. So I thought this was an important slide after that pretty disturbing um, article, which it said that Coinbase said that it's not true. But of course, we need to be due diligent in this space and always research for ourselves. So this is some of the research I was doing for us. So we would click on uh, Coin marketcap.com go to that website and then you could see this analyzation analyzation of the exchanges all right so this is what it looks like as of today that little exchange verification area is on binance and qcoin but we don't have one at this point for coinbase kraken or binance us so i think that we should all do our due diligence and deep dive into that a little bit more keep an eye out and see if that verification comes in eventually. There is a scoring factor, so you could always click on that scoring factor and you could make certain that when you are purchasing coins or storing coins on an exchange that you get one that is strong. And if you click on that little exchange coding where it had the number on it, this is what it would say. Spot exchange 
exchange score. That's what I circled that 8.3, I believe, on coin mark on Coinbase. So coin market cap ranks and scores exchanges based on the following web traffic factor, average liquidity, volume, as well as the confidence that the volume reported by an exchange is legitimate. Weights are assigned to the above mentioned factors and a score from 0 to 10.0 is given to the spot exchange. So there you have it. I think we all should do our due diligence at this point in time. But as crypto continues to move on, we're going to look at the overall market, Bitcoin and the Ethereum market cap. So if you are on coin market cap, you can see that the market cap for the last seven days, this is the, the movement. And we are currently at $804 billion. So you can see we went from 850 down to 804. So we have about a $46 billion decline in the last seven days. And here is coin market, the coin360.com. Love this for my visual learners. This is a one day performance in the market cap block size. So last week in the one week, and even this week, if you looked at this on the one week perspective, you would see all red. But I thought it was pretty exciting to see that today, just today, things are looking different. We're going up. We have all green. So Matic, look at the dark green areas. Those are ones that are the darkest green is CRV right now. But the middle green is Matic, Link, Ripple and Litecoin. Those show that they are moving up right now. So Ripple's up 5.46%. Litecoin, it looks like at 13%, Matic 7%, Link cannot see, it's so tiny, but Bitcoin is up 1% and Ethereum's up 1%. So, you know, this, this is where the acquisition could be happening, the acquisition transition. So 16,000 is pretty exciting for Bitcoin and 1,100 for Ethereum is pretty exciting. Notice that the USTD, the tether peg at a dollar has uh, lost its dollar peg. USTC is at 99 cents, but Binance USD is still at a dollar. So now we're going to go and use CryptoMastery.online indicators. So if you want to subscribe to them, just click on CryptoMastery.online and you can scoop them up now. So here is Bitcoin USD one day performance chart with the crypto mastery indicators. So on the top, you have the average true range. That is the red arrow in the little box and then the red line to the right that shows that the average range is in a downward trajectory. The early reversal, that's the, the green arrow to the left, that has not come up recently. Um, so we're waiting on that. And then you have below that, you have the trend indicator that shows that it is currently going down. On the right hand side of that, sorry, I forgot to label this. This is the radar. And this shows that the average of what the one hour chart is doing, and that's the 60 minute that is going down. For the four hour, that's 240 minutes is what that 240 stands for, that that average and that movement is moving upward, but for the one day, the average is moving upward and the one week is down. So this is a really good indicator. We call it the radar because you could literally be looking at, I would sometimes I have three radars going and you can customize the time frames that they're pulling. So I'll usually have three radars on my charts so I can look everything from one minute to a month on my charts at one time phenomenal and it's really good for you to understand what your your trading personality is like what, how much time do you have to look at the market and that'll help you decipher if you should be trading at a one minute chart like an intraday chart meaning like you're in and out within the day or within an hour or if you're a long-term trader that maybe trades once a year or twice a year or maybe Maybe you just buy and hold for a decade. You know, nothing's right, nothing's wrong. It's it's what's right for you. Okay, so trend strength indicator. That's the TSI. That's what the TSI stands for. The when there's a green arrow up, it means that the strength is moving upward, and a red arrow down means the strength is moving downward. So at this point, we've got two arrows down, so it is going downward. 
The signal line, that is green when it's going up and red when it's going down. Such a simple way to like look at a chart. I love these indicators. So the signal line is going down, but you see that gold line? When those intersect, it means it's about to flip to the other color. So therefore, with this, I'm seeing this is pretty exciting. This is a one day performance, so don't get too excited because it fluctuates a lot. Um, but it looks like it could be moving to the place where the floor is hit and it's going to be moving up. The volatility index that is going, that is super low right now. And it's the oversold zone is what it's in. And oversold means it's below the 20 line. That thick red line on the bottom indicator that stands for the number 20 and the thin thin line below that that stands for a one a zero so it, it look on the right hand side of that volatility index indicator you see 9.69 that's the number where bitcoin is at right now for the day so that's super low super exciting for people that are in acquisition mode all right so now we're going to flip over to the ethereum chart and we're going to see if ethereum is following bitcoin Usually the queen follows the king, so let's see what the queen is doing. Okay, so we have Ethereum USD one day chart with the crypto mastery indicators. Average true range is still in the downward trajectory. The early reversal has not come in yet. And the trend is just like Bitcoin going down. And the trend strength is also just like Bitcoin is still saying downward. And the signal line, just like Bitcoin, it's tight. So, you know, Sometimes one indicator is going to give you a little bit of information sooner than the others before it all kind of pops out and moves fully in the other direction. So what that signal line is telling me, it's getting close to a floor, all right? And that volatility index is definitely on a floor too. What's exciting about this one is Ethereum has a lower oversold zone than Bitcoin does. And I like that because Ethereum is, it just... Ethereum has more room to grow because it's such a lesser cost price range. And uh, I just think that it's, it's more scalable. So it's good to know that Ethereum is getting to, it's positioning in itself to a very low, low rebuy cost. All right, so now let's get into the basket. So in our basket, we have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, and Solana, and most of these can be found on Coinbase. So here's some hot movers in our basket. So at this point, the winner today is Litecoin. It changed 13.75%. And if you think back to what we just looked at, we looked at that heat map and what was darker green? Litecoin. And Link, that went up 8.27%. Matic went up 7.56%. Adam up 3.2, Phantom up 2.9, Cardano, which is ADA, is up 2.89, Bitcoin up 2.57, Ethereum up 2%. And this is a, more of an intraday percentage that's moving upward. It's it's a shorter time frame. Harmony is up 1.7, Solana is up 0.3, and Algorand is down 2.3. So this is the crypto screener that you're looking at now. This is on tradingview.com and it's just filtered by coins in Coinbase. And I want and I I clicked on the percentage change so we could kind of see what is super duper up right now. That was pretty exciting to know. Elf is up 73%. It's pretty big. And this is on you can see on the top right hand upper area it says 1D. This stands for the movement in one day. AIOZ EOS network is up 29%. And that's with if you pair it with Tether and the EO AIOS, I'm not gonna say that, I'm sorry guys, is up 25.41% with the pair of the USD. Curve is up 20%, and CELO is up 18%, Chrono is up 18%, Math is up 16%, and Nest is up 16%. So now we're going to go review the indicators live on some charts. So if you want to scoop them up, go to CryptoMastery.online. It's time for Q&A, and let's get onto the charts right now. 
And Joe is here. And if you guys have any questions, you have any requests that you want us to look at, please let us know. It's good to see everybody here today. Hi, Susie. Hi, everyone. Hey, Joe. Okay. So, um, you know, where I like to start off at is uh, kind of what we were doing last week. Let's go over to that crypto pair screener, right? And uh, remove them access columns. And for anyone new following along, this is a perfect way to um, find out where the money flow is going and if we have any potential opportunities with the technology. You just want the technical rating, is that right? Yeah. <clears throat> so the first thing I want to do is, is up at the top next to the uh, magnifying glass, the search, put in there BTC. Right, and uh, let's start off with uh, LTC BTC, the first one. Now, I wanted to start off with this one because this is where we were looking at last week. Yeah. And uh, we had a bell alert. And these, this is one of them trades that the market just, um, you know, we were able to get follow through from that bell alert. And she's trending. So if you're long in this position from last week, what you want to do is, is set your alert to the TSI for when you get the uh, first red green dot to exit. And this was a great setup. That went up 62% in the last 21 days. So people are jumping out of Bitcoin and going into Litecoin. Yeah. And, this and, is and you know, week. this is, well, yeah, I was just going to just say, I'm sorry, is that this is all along with our thesis of what to do when Bitcoin is going down. Yeah. That's great. So um, that was a great one in here. And then there's another one over here, which is, uh, yeah, this is Link BTC. And if you change that to the daily, Okay, oh, nice. see today we got, yeah, we're coming off with ERI. So what you want to do is, is uh, let's mark this up of what we're waiting for and what we have. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right, so what we do have is a check mark on, we've got the TSI. Volatility index is good. You tell me what you want me to check, and I'm just checking them. Oh, no, well, you're doing good. I'm just going to stay quiet. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the, the early reversal indicator came with you guys right here. I'll just zone in on this. So right here, this is the early reversal indicator. So that came in. Whew, man, that went big. I'm going to just delete this line so we can see how fast, how far that went. So I want to just make a line here so you guys can see this. This is like the next point this is the Keltner band and there's averages usually the price will hit the bottom then the middle and then the top so we still have this much room to for it to grow to get to that once the price gets to this point then the average true range will kick into the upward zone so those are some key points that we're looking for to see if this will you know continue the momentum in that direction but so the average true range is not in so i would say that we're waiting on the average true range go ahead joe you talk i'll just do oh well look that was well said and i would say in, in addition to that we're also waiting for a cross of the signal line 
and we're also waiting for a bell alert on the trend indicator. Do you have any questions, you guys? Do you have any? Do you wonder anything about this? Let's see if we have any questions in the questions box. All right, this is the time to tell us if you if you have any coins that are in your portfolio that you're wanting us to look at. Please let us know too. That would be fun to do. Okay, so. Okay, so <clears throat> now we want to put in there waiting for. Across the signal line and waiting for the trend indicator, the bell alert. You know, and what we should do is, is make like a watch list and just add these coins to the watch list. So then next week we can start with these. Sure, then let's just do this. So what we'll do is I will just add a subcategory, add a section, and say basket watch list. Or, you know what, no, I'll just say watch list because it's not really the ones in our basket. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So to do that, you just, did you guys, hopefully you guys saw me do that. I just added a subcategory and now I, you had to have one underneath it, I guess, to make it a subcategory. When I clicked, I'll go moved it up, and now we're having Link and Bitcoin there. Okay. Waiting for a cross and waiting for a trend. And what's really cool is <clears throat> this trading view, they save it, and they also got this, like, really good Black Friday sale where you save on it. Um. I love this this software. I do too. It's great. Okay, so what's the next one you want to look at? Or what? We also okay. did Litecoin, so I should put Litecoin in that watch list. Yeah, please. Okay, perfect, guys. Beautiful. Litecoin's beautiful. So. Okay, and the um, <clears throat> okay, so another market I have here is uh, CRV BTC. Okay, nice. and today we got uh, a ERI, and that was today. Now, what's cool about this is 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 that we got the ERI and the TSI both at the same time. This is like one of them classic setups we've been looking at and searching for. And how we've seen when watching progress for over the last couple months. So this is great. Do you see, that's a big, this is a one day guys. That's a lot of movement in one day. That's a thick candle. That's well, what the market is doing is it, 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 it's 20%. doing its best. Yeah, it, well, it's doing its best to stretch out to break that ATR. Like, you see that ATR up there? It's coming for it. Believe me. This is one of those things where it's just like it was such a... Uh, oh, with these exchange and these newses and these scare tactics, it's like, oh my gosh, we're such on a floor. And it's one of those moments where you just want to have your money right there ready. <laughs> so what, what we want to do is, is let's get that and look, see how we got the cross in the signal line right now. So we want to add that to the right yeah. hand side and, and let's put some checks in there. And it looks like what we're waiting for is the uh, trend indicator and we're waiting for the um well, we're waiting for the trend indicator and the atr and you see how the radar is all green yeah, yeah. it's pushing so we're waiting for the bell and um well you know what it it's going to change that average true range any minute now. Look at that. Literally. Like, true. So the eight, the average true range 
ATR is about to flip. Because that's all it has to do is go up a little few more inches and, and we're done. Wow, wow, this is a good one. Remember, this is a one day chart, guys. So let's see like how long it took before it went back down last time. So it was here. It well, I would say like the rise lasted Friday to Tuesday. So whatever, maybe a short upward swing, but ride it, right? <laughs> well, it, well, you know, it, it makes sense. I mean, like the main Bitcoin has pressure on it. And, and, and see, that's the thing is that, you know, you don't have to do Bitcoin to make money in crypto. Bitcoin is a part of, you know, it, it's a main part, you know, of the crypto industry. But it doesn't mean that. Bitcoin is the only opportunity, and that's that's the point I'm just trying to get to. You know, in the orchestra, you got many um, instruments to get the sound, you know, to get that beautiful melody. So it, it's more going on inside the crypto world other than Bitcoin and other than Ethereum. Like when I was new, I thought like that's what maybe the best it could get, but I it wasn't until like after like researching this and applying the technology on different coins where i started to realize where hey you know you know it's almost endless of how much uh opportunity they have out there like as far as the coins but you know you need to have the the right timing of when all that information can be of use so this is great because we're seeing here you know the technology at work and, and notice how we've been staying with the same consistent rules so i think that that's uh it's also interesting that where all these opportunities we're seeing is they're all in the pairs so you know just think for the, for those people that aren't educated and they don't have the tools they may be stuck in that cloud where they're, they don't think that there's uh, a potential opportunity to make money um when there is and we're seeing it. And, and I also found another good one, too, when you're done. <laughs> All right, which one? All right, uh, this one here is uh, uh, EOS BTC. And like, what I'm looking for is I try to get things right before. Now, this one here is like in between, right? Now, what's interesting on this one is this. If you um, tighten the chart up, right? Okay. If you notice in here, yeah, well, I just wanted to get to the last date where it broke the ATR. Wow. Right. So, you know, it's almost been in here like three in this three month down cycle. So this ERI is really important because right now, you know, this ERI may be the clue where this market starts to move up higher to test that APR. And uh, right now there's room on the TSI. Now, if you notice the TSI, there's no color at all. So this is one of the case points where you're waiting for the next you know, green dot on the TSI. And, and if you get a green dot after this ERI, this could be a great opportunity. I mean, you know, this thing in here could be ready to break the ATR. So, you know, it, it, even though it's in one of them case points where the TSI is in between, like if you open that up, you'll see that there's no print on the TSI. Okay, which generally means that whichever way Whichever color we get, it should continue to go. Okay. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna put some check marks on there and say we got the early reversal. Uh, we we do have a three on the trend, and we are waiting on the TSI. Alphabet. 
And then we got the signal line and signal line came in well. Now the signal line's tight. So how many, how long ago was this? So it was just yesterday when the early reversal came in and it really didn't reverse yet, you know? So that's good. So, so there's a chance that it's uh, ready to tune. Well, once you, now what's interesting about this is, right, is that once you get what we're looking for, because if you say, well, what are we looking for? We're looking for that follow through movement out of, from the ERI. So, Right now, the market is just in between positioning. So we, the only thing we can do is set our alerts. But, you know, I'm over here and I'm checking now on the uh, Ethereum side, right? Like if you put ETH in there on the, um, the, EOS on the screener. No, well, on the screener, the crypto uh, pair screener. Oh, okay. And yeah, change that to ETC. And let's start off with. Uh, oh, wait, did link. you want Ethereum Classic or Ethereum? Because you said ETC. Oh, well, I just want ETC because that brings up the suffix inside the screener so you can assort it from the technical rating. Everything that's ETH. Well, so uh, we want to go H, not C. H. Okay, you said C, so they're just two different coins. So I'm make sure I got the right one. Okay. Sorry. Okay. And what we're looking for is link ETC. So link if you ETC double click the technical. ETH. Yeah. Well, if you double click the technical rating. Okay, and it should be up at the top. Okay, ETH. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to add it to the watch list. Okay, so one second. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just do. Okay. Beautiful. Now, what's cool about this one, which is unique of the other ones, is that if you go to the uh, weekly, because I know you, you like to look at the weeklies. This this has a weekly and a daily. Wow. Yeah, look, day and week are in, in compliance. It's got the ATR over here. The average true range is in the upward range. Check. Staying there. The early reversal came in again. This is, this is in progress. And it's got a one. That's fabulous. That's a good one. Yeah. Now, when you come over here to the, um, go back to the uh, daily, right? Because the, the weekly, it's going to take uh, a week to complete that bar. So once you got the information from the weekly, now you're looking at the daily. And if you noticed on the daily, you know, we're on that, the, the signal line just crossed today. Exactly. Put them checks in there. So the only thing we're waiting for is the bell alert, which is coming. And this looks like it's going to take out that old high in November. It really does. So the only thing you need to do is put waiting for the bell alert. You know, and again, we're seeing all the opportunities in the pairs. And you got to go where the money flow is going. Yeah, and this is what we call let the cake bake when it's in the in the black zone. And just if anybody's new to the indicators, when the volatility index is is red, the candlesticks are red here. So this these two indicators kind of reflect each other. When the candlesticks are black, it's because it's in the let the cake bake zone. It's not an oversold and not an overbought. And when it does get to overbought, when when the volatility gets into the green zone, like here, these candlesticks go green. So 
that is, I think, helpful. When you get into the green zone, that's danger, in my opinion. And, and everyone thinks green is go, but it means that you better really exercise your opportunity to swing trade if you want to maintain the integrity of your portfolio. So all hands on deck, all eyes on deck, definitely if you're in the green zone, because then you're hitting a ceiling. Would you have anything you want to add to that, Joe, about the green zone? Um, that's well said. Um, just as long as we're trending with the upper end of the upper culture band, like we are right now, this thing is um, bull. You know, so um, I just say this thing in here, it's, it's on its way. And if you're in this, you know, look for the number count to kick in on the bell alert. And you can scale in again. Scale in, scale in, scale out. That's good. Good advice. Let's see if we have any questions. All right. KS said, can you look up Matic? And he wants to look up Cello USD. You okay with that, Joe? Yeah, sure. I see what Matic's doing. And KS, what exchange do you have it on? I'll just do Coinbase for now, but um, let's see if he responds. Okay. Well, what's good about the Matic is, is we got the ERI. So, look, that's a great find. We got the ERI today. Um, what we don't have yet is we don't have that TSI. So, this is one in here, Susie. Um, I'd say this is a good find by KS because what we can do is is we we have a bunch of waiting fours, right? And we have one check. So I think this is actually a great find, and we want to you know add this to our list and see how this comes to fruition over the next week. Anytime we get into that oversold zone. And we get a, a ERI. That's a that's a math setup right there. So it's uh, now it's um, it, it has it looks like it has potential. So Matic is in our basket, but I'll I'll move it down to. I'll make our basket flags. Pink, so we know what's in our basket. Yeah. Now you want to remember this is that you know the, the markets are driven by money flow. So when it comes in there to Matic, right? Just on the conversation, there's also a Matic BTC. Okay, should we look that so, one up? Yeah. Why don't we do that and just put that there just before we go to the other one? Uh, Coinbase? Yeah, there you go. That's what I was looking for. All right. Well, actually, they both look like a. I guess the dollar one is only. I guess they look like the. I guess they're like the same market. The hmm. volatility index on this one is higher. Like, I'll go back to the other one really quick. Look, the volatility index using USD to buy Polygon was a lot lower than this using Bitcoin to buy Polymatic. The, it wasn't in the oversold zone. You know what? It looks a lot more smoother, too. This one looks a little bit more choppy. I like the uh, the USD one better. <laughs> okay. Right? Well, well, let's I mean, get, that's a big yeah. movement. <laughs> They're used to using Matic as a perching place to get in and out. <laughs> that's a good example. This is good because, you know, we talk about pairs and maybe people just don't see that there's potential up and downside with the pairs. Yeah. So, what's, you, I saw timing in this. But that's a overall. That's a great find 
And what was the other coin? The next one is Celo USD and Celo BTC. So I'll add it to our watch list. Celo USD. I'm looking to see if it's on Coinbase. And it is not. So I don't know if KS is in the United States or not, but I guess we're going to probably take Binance for this one. What do you think? Uh, do you have it on KeyCoin? Uh, let's see. Well, so he said USD, and these are showing Tether. So I'm looking for a USD one. Let's do Binance US. Okay. Oh, he did say he's using KuCoin. Okay, okay, wait. I'll go back and look for it. Celo USD. You could do this, guys. You could just go this and say KuCoin. Okay, so. So uh, KS is saying he's asking me USD, but KuCoin is only showing that it's, oh, he says he's in the US and he's using KuCoin. So, all right, so it's USDT. Because it's, 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 not, um, it's not showing that you can buy it with USD. All right, oh, got a key. Oh, wow. Good job. Wow. Got a key. He's got the trend strength. He's got, I love it. He's got the volatility index. And I love the red. I love buying it when these um, candlesticks are red. Look at the radar is hot. The radar is nice and green all over. And I mean, the average true range is down. The average true range. <laughs> Look, I think that was a great find by KS. I mean, like, you know, that's a great find. So we, look, we don't have it green, really reversed. Susie. Oh, look, it's not going to be perfect 100%. There's nothing going to be 100%. But the thing is, is that right here, this is a great example because the volatility index is below the 20. The... Uh, PSI is coming out of the oversold, and now next you're waiting for the bell alert. I mean, you see the ATR. It looks like the last time. When's the last time it broke the ATR? Like you know, when it went to the downside, was it in oh, September? Oh, a while ago. Look at this. I was just looking at that. So I'll put a an a line there. Wow. August. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I like this KeyCoin exchange. It seems like there's a lot of uh, good coins on there. They, they don't have this on Coinbase, but this right here, this looks like a, a great opportunity. So the only thing I would say is, is that you're waiting for the, the ATR and you're waiting for the bell alert. Oh, where's your signal line? Let's, where's your signal line, Susie? Wow. <laughs> that is odd. I must have deleted it by some awkward thing. All right. So, <laughs> hang, hang tight, guys. We're going to have to go for a ride for a second. So I got to add a new um, radar. Ah, signal lines up. So I've got to add one more thing. So this is good for you guys to see what happens. So I don't have one that actually has the radar on it, so I have to manually add it all the time. All right, so then I go to the radar, and then you can go to move scale down, existing pain below. Okay, thanks for that um, heads up. So here's the signal line came in on the 20th, November 20th. Wow. wow. Yeah. Great opportunity. Great find. All right. So, anybody else have some more things to to add to this? 
What else do you guys want us to look at? Oh, wait, wait. I think we have to yeah. go look at CeeLo Bitcoin, he said. He said that he wanted, he wanted to look at CeeLo Bitcoin. And we'll, there we go, Qcoin. Well, you know, I, I'm going to just say something, Joe. You just did mention, I'm sorry, it's such a delayed response. You said, I like Qcoin. I want to go back mm -hmm. to that slide that I just showed you guys. Qcoin was one of the ones that were verified by Coinbase. It was Binance and Qcoin. But I, I feel like I've read something about American citizens can't be on Qcoin. So before you jump on there, you got to make sure that you can be on there. I have an account, but it's, it's something I opened up, gosh, 2018. So make certain that if you are American that you're still allowed to have it on there. And it may not worry about while you're in there buying and selling, but it's if you need to take profit. That's my only concern. Okay, so KS said, CeeLo BTC printed a bell. Oh, oh, here we go. So let me get into it. And KS is on point. <laughs> yeah, <he's> <laughs> I'm coming to your house for turkey. <laughs> he's hot, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, amazing. Look at this. The ATR changed. Bam. He's on it. ATR changed. Yeah. You got the bell. Yeah. You got the trend strength, but that was a while ago. Let's see when that started. Thursday the 17th. Signal line boom. That happened on Saturday the 19th. He's on it. I mean, the early reversal didn't come in, but that's the only thing they didn't have. And and when these came in, it was in the oversold. So I'll just give volatility index a check and love it how it's low. So yeah. Anything you want to say about that, Joe? I'm gonna put a check on the radar too. Boink. This gets a hundred. I think that uh, look, that's uh, that looks great. You know. I mean, it's, uh, you know, that's all I can say. I mean, um, well done. Well done. All right. I mean, who else add has that to the list. It's on it. All right. So, that, you know, there's something I want to explain to you guys that if you pick key coins and that's all you just focus on those instead of spreading thin and you just focus on that and you just watch it like a baby <laughs> like a three-year-old right the ones that are walking and talking and their arms are working and their legs and they're getting into everything if you just stick to a few coins and you just put all your eggs in a few baskets you, usually you come out with a good harvest a good amount so it's good that KS didn't ask us to look at five or 10 different coins. It shows that he's really zoning in. And I like the fact that he said, let's look at CeeLo using Bitcoin to buy CeeLo, USD to buy CeeLo. And he's looking at it on multiple exchanges. So he's zoning in on, on one and he's focusing. So Joe, I'm going to ask you a personal question here and you don't have to answer it, but how many investments do you typically go in at a time? And I'm trying to figure out if, if if you limit yourself to only investing in, say, one to five, or if you're simultaneously doing five to 10, or are you more in like the 10 to 20 range? Oh, you're saying as far as the uh, Quantity of product. investments simultaneously, yeah. Yeah, look, I'm in, I'm a little bit in everything because, you know, I do a lot of scale in and scale out of positions. I, I don't go really completely flat. Well, sometimes I go completely flat, but, you know, a lot of the trading I've been doing because of the way the market conditions have been over the last six months have, have all been scale in and scale out. And, uh, I've been staying away from the, uh, the majors. The USD ones, 
um, because they've just been dangerous. Like the Bitcoin's been dangerous. To me, personally, the Bitcoin's been dangerous. Um, and like if you change that chart to the Ethereum, like this is another one that my my buddy's in. And, and I'm in Ethereum too. But from my experience, you know, it's best to follow the money flow. And if, and if the opportunity is not there, you know, you can't force the trade to happen. So I try to set my alerts and let the market come to me. And, you know, like if you try to pick a bottom, basically like uh, catch a um, two-sided knife, you know, like you're going to get cut. So the purpose of having the technology is let the technology tell us when. Now, the technology may not agree with our opinion. We all want the market to turn around now, especially me because I, I've been in this market stuck, you know, um, since uh, since above 30 when I scaled out of my last position. So um, I can just tell you is that uh, use the technology because you can't force something to, ha to happen that's not ready. Like the, the, the setups that we're looking at that I showed you earlier where the market is moving, those are in alignment with where the money flow is going. If you notice, that, Susie, that other coin, which is LINK, ETH, that's the, that's the pair opposite of that Ethereum. And while that Ethereum is going down, this is where the money is going. Right here. So the thing is, is that like if you're new to crypto, you know you want to make sure in there that you have an understanding and a, and a balance in your portfolio, because there is a chance in here that um, if the Bitcoin does move down here lower, that these other pairs are going to be maybe the best opportunity in the next couple of weeks. They may just keep going up higher. And you just have to go with the money flow. And then it may, at, towards the end of the year, we may, the market may start to put the bottom in. But use the technology because the, the TSI works and, um, and the, the clues that you see, the clues are consistent. So at some point, that Ethereum will turn in our favor and the same clues will be applicable to that market as well. And that's when you set a high expectation that, hey, this market's going to go up. But for right now, don't let the markets discourage you from your goal, which is to be a, a good investor and to take advantage of an opportunity um, that you may find. Love it. Thank you. Uh, I think that's a... Do you guys have any questions for Joe before we jump off? Or Joe, do you have anything else? Any other wisdom you want to bestow onto everybody? Oh, no. um, I was just checking over here. There's another market we can just on KeyCoin. I just want to just point this out. It's uh, LSK ETH. And this one here has actually been on the move, but um, it's all along with the same thesis that at the same time when that Ethereum started going down, this has been going up. Like, yeah. So if you look at when the time we got that ERI, look, and the ERI matched the bell alert and, and the signal line. Yeah. So those are the setups that we're looking for. So how much juice do you think this there's left in this one? So it, it it hasn't flipped the average true range yet, but it's close. It's close because it once it hits this area, it'll get there. It's at the top of the Keltner. So do you mind if we pull back and go to a one week and kind of see? Oh like yeah, look. 
yeah, I mean, look, the, the idea is, is is that you you positioned yourself in the beginning with the education that you acquired in here from the training from us, which means is that you put yourself in this trade on the first green dot on the TSI, or you put yourself in this trade at the bell alert. That's that's what we've been going over for for months now. Now, right now the market is all the way up at the money bag or the dollar sign, so. It's still in play because we haven't got the red dot on that TSI yet. But overall, the value zone, you know, starts to diminish, you know, the more time that passes and the market stops making a higher high. So, you know, on a scale from 1 to 10, from the positioning of when we first got our green dot on the TSI, it was a 10. But now that 10 diminishes with time value and now that 10 maybe let's say uh, a five and then if we get a green dot a, a red dot on the tsi then that five is going to go all the way down to a two okay so but right now, it's still in play to the upside. That's what I'm trying to say. But it's not time to get in. Let me see if I can find something on the... You just said it's not time to get in? Well, no. Well, I said if, if you... Right now, where it's at, buying it is a little bit dangerous versus when the setup first initially happened. I was just trying to just focus in right. on uh, what's important is how much of a reach of a retracement did it do from that bell alert? What percentage did it move up from oh, that bell okay. alert? All right, let's see. So this to this point, it went up eleven percent in five days. Yeah. And what happens is is that you see how that TSI starts to go up? Okay. Once that TSI starts to get up into that overbroad zone, if that TSI turns red, it becomes more and more of a high riskier trade. Now, it could still make money, but it's not a, a, a 10. That's what I'm trying to say, like it was. You know, one of the things that I would like to look at really quick with you guys is look at the strong cells because sometimes this is where like your your setups could be where you see like what is hitting the floor right now and then you just keep an eye on those to see like what has hit the floor at that point like do you ever joe look to see what's really really low to get it at that pivotal point like right just like cs found that one list where, here, I'll go back to the list and show you guys. Uh, maybe it's Cello. He's finding it right at that prime place, which is like, it's about to grow. It's like that seedling, the seed just got roots and it's about to pop through the soil. So it's the thing, it's like, it's exciting to watch ones that are dropping, like the Niagara Falls, and then when it hits, it's gonna splash back up. So. Do you have like a honey hole where you look for those places, Joe, where you're going to find the ones that you just hit? You know what I mean? You got to find that yeah. stuff. Yeah, well, I, I understand what you mean, but a lot of times I just let the market come to me. You know, like, like if we're in the car and we have the GPS going, you know, do you turn the GPS off and say, well, hey, today I think I'm just going to just, uh, you know, wing it. No, you, you use the GPS. You never turn it off, right? I mean, you carry your cell phone everywhere you go. Like, we're in the 21st century. So what are we doing? We're, we're letting technology um, navigate us, you know, on communication, uh, navigate us on information, you know? So the technology here is navigating us on a better decision-making process. I mean, at the end of the day, you're the one that actually pulls the trigger and says, I want to get into this trade or I don't want to take this trade. 
The only thing we can do is, is show you and train you and prepare you for what you need to look for until you're ready to apply that. And then at some point when you start applying it, I mean, you start to get good, like like KS. I mean, I know you've been with this for a while, but today's the day in there where is that you really shine because, you know, what you pointed out to us is everything that we've been going over. And, and I know, you know, you're a great trader because you got the fundamentals of what you're looking for. And, and that's the whole purpose and the time that we've been spending is learning the fundamentals of how to use this program and, and why is this program, you know, so advantageous and, 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 and what advantage do I gain from using the program? It's a big advantage. You know, I know there, I talk to people and they tell me all the time, you know, how do you know when to buy the market? And I'm not, uh, some type of guru. I'm a normal person just like everyone else, but I'm just good at following the clues and, and, and the tools. And, and I was fortunate enough to, to put together this great outline, which is the best five chart lay overlays that I believe like all you need. And this is what we've been going over to be able to navigate through the markets and and find opportunities because you got over a hundred products at the brokerage. How do you know out of them hundred products which market to invest in or which coin? It's almost impossible. So this is why you need the technology because you can only go but so long off of reading a a newsletter and a newsletter is great, but when you got a hundred products in there and and then you got 10 products to do, it's still a little bit overwhelming because there's so many products at the brokerage. But but once you acquire the education with the technology, you know, you can shift through very easily through the uh, products of the brokerage and right away know, hey, this is what I want to do, this is what I don't want to do. And setting the expectation is winning. That's that's the first part of winning is having a plan, setting the expectation. And when you know that, it's, hey, it's not ready yet. So a lot of times I let the market come to me. And, and if it's not ready, I find another market and let that market come to me. And then if there's nothing to do, then I wait. And then at some point, the market will come to me. And as long as the market's coming to me and I'm playing the game with the education and the technology, we're just going to just keep doing these same consistent, consistent setups that we've been doing over and over again. Like you're seeing, like the ERI, the TSI, matches up, the bell alert, score, up, oh, go again, let's do another market. You know, at, at some point, you know, we're going to, this great bull market will come back, right? And then it'll be back into really a buy-hold game where we're going to go back to the old highs. But right now, the best way is just to let the technology navigate you through these these periods of uncertainty and accumulate, you know, different positioning so that you are ready when the markets do move and then you can make the most of that opportunity. Sounds great. I um I would say maybe it'd be great next week to go over buying on these indicators but setting your sell so right after you buy you set your sell that way if you walk away and it goes up and you're eating breakfast lunch or dinner or putting the kids to bed or doing something that you want to do you're automatically taking profit so i'd like to go over that with you next month next week if that's okay joe so like setting your sell okay. out right after the buy and that way you're setting yourself up for automatic success and you know you may not be taking the full profit that you could but but that's in and as joe says you say you scale in you could potentially scale out so at least you get some of your profit back right away yes that's a great plan so ks wanted to say something and then we'll jump off i'm sorry we're over the one hour mark guys 
A word of caution for new members. If something is really down, always ask yourself, have the fundamentals changed? Don't buy something only because it is low. Some things never recover. Like Luna, potentially Solana, which is Sol, after the FTX blow up. So um, Kaya says indicators and matrix are super useful, but only if the fundamental thesis remains the same, not invalidated. So I will challenge that, KS, and, and I agree with that to some extent, but I had this one swing trader that used to teach with me, and he says he calls fundamentals funny mentals. He thinks that if you look at a chart, technicals mean everything to him. He didn't even care what the company was. He didn't care about who was the CEO or anything. He just wanted to see the chart. And so once you really get to understand the charts and you get to feel, you feel the rhythm, the music, it's like you know how the song is going to end and how it's going to start when you know how to read the music. So I think that there's two perspectives in that. And I didn't want to leave today with people thinking that fundamentals were extremely important. They do they do set the stage, but once you really get in inter interactive with the charts, the charts kind of tell you which way to go. And Joe, what's your opinion on that? Well, I mean, look, the the thing is that it depends. You know, I mean, like if you look at the case point, like with Luna and everything, like there were some coins that had some perfect fundamentals, and the technology was set up. And then everything went out the window, and then it just went straight down. So, you know, there's always going to be that case point where, you know, things that you're that everything looks perfect on the chart, and it doesn't work out. But that's called trading. There is no hundred percent trade out there, okay? And just because something looks perfect on the chart, it doesn't mean that it's a hundred percent. And just because something on paper with, with fundamentals doesn't mean that it's 100% because there still has to be that that balance. And, and really, at the end, it's really about money flow, right? Like, if you follow the money flow, that's really the footprint of the whale. Now, what's difficult in this business is, is that, you know, you're um, – you know, you're positioning yourself in here, but you don't know the uncertainty of what may happen within the brokerage. Just like right now, there's this uncertainty with FTX. It was a great coin. Why does it keep going down to zero? It, it, it's, it's just, you know, this business, there's always going to be that factor. And, you know, you have to be with a good um, brokerage and still with the crypto you want to have money in the cold wallet because you know these companies are billion dollar companies so anything can happen when you got companies that are dealing with billions of dollars all that's, right that's what I would say. thank you thank you it's great having you guys all here so exciting about you and your trading success and we'll see you next week Thank you. Um, have a great week, everyone. Yes, happy Thanksgiving, guys. Have a great turkey day. Yes, happy turkey. <laughs>